We're going to be talking from the book of Philippians. And I titled this Rejoice. Because I think we all need to rejoice. And when we were singing the worship, the joy of the Lord is my strength, that is something that we need to grab onto. We need to embrace that. Because if, if we are Christians, if we're followers of Jesus, we should have joy in our heart. And we should be rejoicing mm -hmm. for the hope that he gives us, right? Let's see what Paul has to say here. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we are thankful for this word that comes from the Apostle Paul. Lord, we pray that we internalize it. And Lord, that we have hearts of joy. We have hearts that rejoice in you. That you are our hope. Lord, that you, we embrace the victory that has already taken place by you and live in that light and no longer in the darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Does anybody ever get discouraged? Okay. Mm -hmm. Paul's writing this letter to, to the church in Philippi and they're experiencing persecution, okay? So he's speaking to them, and he's telling them to rejoice. Does anyone think that persecution takes place anywhere in the world today? Maybe. You know, despite, despite China's public relations effort to, to try and get the world to see them in a positive light, and the church is growing, in China. Persecution still takes place in China, okay? Their human rights record is not very good. Yet, do you know they're trying to take over the United Nations? Mm -hmm. They're trying to be the, whatever, the secretary, whatever it is, the leaders now in the United Nations with a track record of human rights violations as bad as they have. And I'm not here to pick on China, but I want you to understand, Paul is writing this letter to a church that is undergoing persecution. There's still, we have closed our eyes many in our comfortable churches in America, not even paying attention to persecution is still going on around in the world today. And we need to be praying for these people around the world. In this this is something we get, the voice of martyrs. I don't know if any of you have seen that before. And this particular issue is just about China. And it's amazing some of the things here. And I'll just read a little bit to you. Um, when we met her and her five-year-old son in the back room of her restaurant in China, we were greeted by graciousness rather than sadness. She politely provided a concise update of her husband's situation, Shane saying she did not know where he was, but she was sending money to the police station so they would provide food for him. Wait a minute. You mean if you're in jail, they don't feed you? Mm -hmm. Your family's responsible to make sure that you get food? Well, Isn't that revelation, huh? So her, her husband is a pastor of this Livingstone Church he started, which was an underground church in 2009 started. And it became, government, government scrutiny became and pressure grew as the church group became a bigger threat, right? Mm -hmm. And it was shut down by the Chinese government. And her husband, the pastor, was hauled off to jail, okay? And, um, these are things that are not reported in the open news, right? We don't hear so much about this stuff. He was not only looking after his own congregation, but also other house churches in the region that were experiencing government persecution. The government knows that wherever 
There is persecution. There is something there related to my husband, his wife said. That is why the government hates him so much. Okay. And so she went, she went to pick him up, expecting his release. She goes, today I went to pick up Pastor Yang, but I failed, she pointed out. I saw four people pushing him into a van without a license plate, with a black hood, and his mouth might have been sealed. I called out to him. He didn't respond. The four people did not allow me to approach him. They pushed him into the car and sped away. I asked for the detention center, and they only said the department managing him took him away. They could not tell me which department or where he went. These are, you know, these are things that are not being reported in the Pueblo Chief or in our newspapers. Because China doesn't want people to know that they're so persecuting people this, this way for their faith, okay? Persecution is still going on. People are still being locked up in prison, okay, for their faith around the world. People are still getting discouraged, yet when this reporter met with his wife, he was not met with sadness. She had a certain joy and contentment that could only come from the Lord. And her husband was locked up and she didn't know where he was or if she probably ever would see him again. William Ward was an 18th century missionary to Singapore. And this is something he said I thought was interesting. Now, I know it's a lot, but just hear me out. Discouragement is dissatisfaction with the past. Distaste for the present, and distrust of the future. Mm -hmm. It is ingratitude for the blessings of yesterday, mm -hmm. indifference to the opportunities of today, and insecurity regarding strength for tomorrow. Unawareness of the presence of beauty, unconcern for the needs of others, and unbelief in the promises <clears throat> it is impatience with time, immaturity of thought, and impoliteness to God. I find that interesting how he worded that. Mm -hmm. Impoliteness to God. <laughs> this is how he describes what discouragement is. So we're like both the past, present, and the future. Meaning, no hope. Just like those angry people that may have tried to curse us or something. They don't see any hope. There's no gratitude. There's no joy. There's no hope. But it's got to be appalling to God. The joy of, we heard this, right? The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Huh? What do you think? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Say it! That's what I want to hear. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So here we look at it. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Gentleness be evident of all. Do not be anxious. And have thanksgiving in your heart. And guard those hearts. Gentleness. Gentleness. Kindness. To what? To others. Love one another. Jesus didn't just say that just to say something. He meant for us to love one another, to care for one another, not to be anxious. You know, if we're anxious, that is not of God. That is not of God. When we're concerned and overwhelmed by problems and issues, God is just waiting for us to give them to Him. He never intended us to carry all those burdens. And He wanted us to have thanksgiving in our heart, being thankful for His creation. He is the Creator. Being thankful for everything that He has provided us, for the daily needs He meets in our lives. Be thankful. You know, when you're thankful, it changes your heart. It changes your heart. And we've got to guard our hearts and our minds. And that comes from, from a military inside the city. That's where that word comes from. Guarding the city. And we're responsible for guarding our hearts. From what? 
from attacks, from temptations. We were talking this morning in the Bible study about uh, what comes out, what comes out of our mouth comes from our heart. How many times have we said things we didn't mean to say, and they never really, we never really thought that before we said it. It just came out because it came out of our heart. We've got to guard our hearts. We've got to guard our minds. And we were saying this morning again, by garbage in, garbage out. We've got to protect what we take in for, through our senses, through visual stimulation or other types of means. What we believe is how we act. Okay? What we believe is how we act. What do I mean? I mean that if you believe God is your creator, then you're going to look outside and you're going to see the beauty. You're going to see God's beauty everywhere you look. Mm -hmm. You're going to see his master, the master artsman, craftsman, that he is, right? You're going to be willing to forgive others just as he has forgiven you. Do you believe God forgave you? Yeah. Then you've got to act accordingly by forgiving others, right? Do you believe he was resurrected from the dead? Yeah. Then there's belief and hope that other people can be resurrected from the dead. Other people can be resurrected from their sin, from the darkness they live in, right? Mm -hmm. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Continue praying for those. The life everlasting. And we, we have that hope. There, as much as we struggle here on earth, we have the hope there's something better waiting for us. No suffering, no pain, a new body. Praise God for that, right? We've got to embrace the truth and integrate it in, with the Bible. So embrace the truth that is out there. Integrate it with God's word. Jesus is the truth, right? And Amen. what we think is the way we act. What you think you put into practice. What you take in, you put into practice. How we respond. Anybody know that name? Dietrich Bonhoeffer? He's written some really interesting, uh, well, he has a, uh, basically one main book. He was in Germany during the time of Hitler. And he was very outspoken against Hitler. And he was a very strong Christian. And he had no fear for his own life, basically what he said, against the atrocities that Hitler was carrying out against the Jews. Okay. Well, this is one of the, what he said. One other thing back. So he was in prison. Finally, they imprisoned him. And they accused him of plotting to kill Hitler so they could execute him. And they executed him right at the end of the war, just before Germany was liberated. But it was almost like they wanted to make sure he didn't live. And he said this, your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. Oh, wow. That is an interesting way to put it, right? Your life, the what you do and how you carry yourself should make others question why they don't believe. Mm. Yeah. That could be the hope they see in you. Could be the joy they see in you. Whatever it might be. But the way you act should cause them to question their beliefs. Rejoice in the Lord. Get rid of any anxiety. Again, and I, I know you heard me say it, but give that stuff up to God. Get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of that junk that's in, hidden in your heart. And start living an attitude of grat an attitude of gratitude. There were. And an, an attitude of thanksgiving that, that is gratitude for what God has given you. What he has provided for you. 
Stop focusing on the negative and start focusing on the positive. You know, they had a big thing, and they probably still do, about positive thinking, you know, and where I'm okay, you're okay, and all this stuff. It's all trying to get, to think, start thinking positively and get rid of the negative thoughts. But we can do that with God. Amen. We can give all the negative stuff, all the crap to Him. Amen. Amen. It's easy said, right? <laughs> Do not be anxious about anything. Well, Paul, that's really easy for you to say, you know. Mm -hmm. How are we supposed to live like that? Do not be anxious about anything. Cheer up. Do not be afraid. Don't you love that? You're not feeling, oh. I keep going back. This is so relevant to our teachings on Thursday night with the women at the prison. It's it's like, you know, your child comes to you, mommy, 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 and really upset about something. And you, you just, and you ignore the child's feelings, just say, cheer up, get over it, mm -hmm. you know, quit crying. What's that saying to the child? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you're not important. You're not recognizing my feelings or what I'm going through. And maybe you've been in that situation. Maybe a fellow Christian came along and said, oh, cheer up, it's all right. Don't, you know, get over it. We need to share. The mo whether it's the mourning, the grieving, or whatever is going on, the other person, right? That these are just empty words sometimes, okay? Or you can just say, close your eyes and make believe it's all gone, mm -hmm. you know? Just Make it till you make it. Whoop, it's gone. Or, trust in God. Mm -hmm. That's his love. Anxiety, if you want to give it up, you have to have faith. And you have to have trust that God will take it from you and is willing to take it from you. Trust in God. If we do not pray, we'll worry. If you're not going to bring those things out in the open and pray about them, then you're just going to worry yourself, what is it, sick, right? You're going to worry yourself sick. And there's a little, that's exactly what happens. You worry yourself sick. Or you can pray and be content. Content. It doesn't sound like that big a word. But boy, there's something about contentment that's really satisfying. Choose. Misery or joy. Sometimes, I think it's the way we view ourselves. Do you ever say, I deserve to feel that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, water. you don't. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve to feel that way. You deserve to have the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not the misery that comes with worries and anxiety. Our heart is never empty. It's always full of something, right? Mm -hmm. There's always something there. It's either the world or God. So it's your choice. What do you want to fill it with? Do you want to fill it with worldly stuff? Or do you want to fill it with stuff that is from God? Darkness or light? Martin Luther, okay, he's the founder of the <laughs> Lutheran Church in Germany. He, um, Trying to reform the Catholic Church, and they tried to kill him. So he started the Lutheran <laughs> Church. Well, to make a long story short, anyway, but he was trying to bring reform to take place. One of the things he said about our heart: somewhere, a man's heart is like a couple of millstones. If you don't put something between them to grind, they will grind each other. It is because God is not in our hearts that the two stones rub the surface off one another. Mm -hmm. So the victorious antagonist of anxiety is trust. So you want to beat anxiety? Trust in the Lord. And the only way to turn gnawing care out of my heart and life is to usher God into it. And then to keep them there. Mm -hmm. So what's that say? That means it's an ongoing thing. It's a daily renewal. Seeking the Lord on a daily basis. It's not a one-time thing.
thing. You know, we when we're baptized, we accept the Lord, but we have to continually renew ourselves before the Lord. We have to continually submit ourselves before the Lord and be renewed. And the other word comes to me, recharged. Amen. You're recharged by the Lord. Otherwise, you've got these two stones grinding each other in there, causing all that worry and that anxiety mm -hmm. within us. So it can, you can either be full of that or you can be full of God. Anybody know that movie? A League of Their Own? Anybody ever seen it? Mm -hmm. Gina Davis? Tom Hanks? Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting movie. Uh, women's baseball mm -hmm. league that took place during the war because they didn't have men. And so they want, but they want to entertain the people. Mm -hmm. And so Gina Davis is one of the ball players, right? Okay. And Tom Hanks is the coach. And Gina Davis's husband comes back from World War II, is severely injured. Okay. So this is the middle of the baseball season, and she's one of the star players. She goes home, right, to take care of. Her. And so Tom Hanks shows up at her doorstep. And Gina, he's trying to get her to come back, and she goes, it's just so hard. You remember what he said? It's supposed to be. Of course it's hard. That's what makes it great. Of course it's hard. That's what makes it great. Is it hard being a Christian? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. We struggle. Every day. But don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. Jesus said, if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. Don't look back with regret. Don't look back. Continue looking forward. Continue keeping your eyes focused on Jesus. Continue to walk in his path. Our walk is hard. But that's what makes it great. That's what makes it great. When you're, when you're evangelizing overseas, and you know, we just use Taiwan as an example, they say, if I become a Christian, will all my suffering stop? No. <laughs> but that's what they're looking for. They're looking for, you know, an easy way out. No. In fact, they'll probably increase. But that's not what it's about. One day, all our suffering will be gone. Amen. Right? We have to learn, if you don't already know how to hear his voice, spend time in meditation, some time with the Lord, listening to what he has to say to you. He'll speak to you if you listen. Amen. Yes, he will. But if you just do all the talking, he doesn't ask, how are you going to hear what he has to say to you? So they take time in reflection. Take time to see what the Lord wants to say to you as you go before him. And then obey what he has to say. And experience his joy, experience his peace that he has for you. Is there anybody who doesn't want peace? Ernie, this morning in Bible study, shared such a great testimony. Can I, can I share it, Ernie? Do you mind if I share what we shared this morning? He, he said one morning he went into work and he he just felt angry, bitter. He was just all turmoil inside and um, didn't know what to do. So he found a quiet place to go in the dark <coughs> and got on his knees before the Lord and submitted himself to the Lord Amen. and told Satan to get out. Amen. Yeah. Satan to get out. Yeah. And Ask the Lord to fill him. And you know what happened? The Lord gave him peace. Mm -hmm. If we're willing just to do what he did, willing to submit ourselves to the Lord, and tell Satan he has no place, the Lord will give us peace. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to give your troubles up to the Lord, he will give you peace. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. 
If we have a natural fear, it is not of God. If we're fearing a situation, that's not of God. That's not, what's the opposite? Trust. Trusting God. If we're trusting God, then we should not have fear. Right? Prayer and supplication of Thanksgiving. Well, mentioned today, Thanksgiving's coming next month. You're going to get the early turkey, right? The early Thanksgiving treat. Which is what we are to have before the Lord. We are to come before Him not as turkeys, but with thanksgiving in our heart. Right? Amen. Thanksgiving in our heart. We had a missionary uh, we knew in Taiwan said, when she would pray with Taiwanese, and they were just so distraught. She said, think of something to be thankful. Think of something. There's got to be something that you're thankful for. Mm -hmm. You know, you, were, you had a roof over your head. You took a hot mm -hmm. shower this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever it might be, you have food to eat. Think. And you know, when you start in that mindset, it gets you out of that negativity. When you start praying with a heart of thanksgiving, it can totally change your attitude. We talk about supplications, just basically all it is is just our wants and needs when we're praying about our wants and needs. And sometimes because of our anxiety, we are ashamed to even speak out the words. We have a desire, but we can't pray sometimes. It's like we can't even get started because of the anxiety that we are experiencing or the shame. But realize that feeling that we may be going through at that time may be a warning. That we need to deal with that. We need to give it up. We have to speak it out. How often have you spoke out something and then all of a sudden you feel better? Mm. Yeah. Something about bringing it to light. Because Satan likes to work in the dark. Jesus works in the light. And so if you want healing to take place, you've got to bring it out of the dark into the light, right? And then it will reduce our anxiety, apprehension, okay? Thanksgiving changes the heart. When we pray with thanksgiving, we don't know how to start. Say, I don't know how to start praying. Just start thanking God for what he has done for you. Just start with a heart of thanksgiving. Begin praying that way. And it can change your whole outlook. Everything that you see. This is a time of invitation. Um, if you need prayer, you're welcome to come forward. Um, if you'd like to sit where you're at and pray or meditate, you're welcome to do that. It's a time of reflection. Um, what I want to, right now, what I'd like you to do as we watch the video, we'll start thinking of things that you're thankful for. What has the Lord done in your life that you're thankful for? Because when we start in that attitude, that can start changing the negativity. It can start changing the anxiety, the apprehension we have in our hearts to more of hearts of thanksgiving, that hearts are that are grateful. And the peace of God then can then come and descend upon us as a result. What about Jesus dying on the cross? Is that something that we may be thankful for? That we can be forgiven for our sins? That we can be accepted with unconditional love who we, no matter who we are, before the Lord? Amen. First Thessalonians, rejoice always. Rejoice always. Not sometimes, not most of the time, always. Pray once in a while. Now, pray continually. Give thanks in some situations, right? Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will. This is God's will, that we re always rejoice, we always pray, and we always give thanks. 
He doesn't say once in a while or sometimes or most of the time. Always. All the time. So maybe you start the day rejoicing and praying, <clears throat> but then continue through the day. Rejoicing in the Lord. Praying continually. Lifting up all circumstances to Him. Because that's His will for you. That's His will for me. Right? Why? Why would that be His will? Because He loves us. He's a good, good father. Yeah, because He loves us. He knows that's what's best. He is the good, good father. Praise God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Let us have hearts of thanksgiving. Let us have hearts of joy. Let us rejoice in you always. Always lifting up our circumstances before your throne. Thank you that you are a God that loves us so much. That you want us to be happy. You want us to live life fully, abundantly for you. Thank you, Lord. That you are the good, good Father. That we can trust in you. And we don't have to carry all the burdens. We don't have to carry all the cares and concerns of this world. That we can give them to you and trust in you and live a life of abundance. In Jesus' name.